This is our exploration of the Thames and Severn Canal from Stroud to Sapperton Tunnel. There's the uh, map of the entire route going from left to right. And here's the information board near where we started. We're actually starting at the lock just in from the right hand side of the map. Here we come to the first of the locks. The sun's a bit low to take it in the direction we're going, but that's where we've just come up. Here's a nice straight bit with some autumn colours. The canal is being restored. This bit down here is actually navigable. We'll soon come to a point where there's just water in it. This is not navigable. And after that there's bits that have been restored and so forth. We're interested to see what they're like. Come to the road bridge under Dr. Newton's Way. Ooh, sunshine. And after that there'll be a railway bridge. Oh, we come to a mile post. Wall bridge half, which is where we started from. In Gusham, 28 and a quarter, but we, we're not going that far. Come to the magnificent railway viaduct over the canal, where we have to take a diversion to keep going. A little diversion off the canal underneath the viaduct and here's the river. And hopefully we, we can rejoin the canal the other side here. Yeah, we've had to backtrack a little bit to come up onto the road in order to get past this railway. So this we now do and rejoin the towpath on the other side. Now under the same viaduct on the other side of the canal nicely decorated. Yeah, this is the other side. Welcome to Cape Wilson. And there's the full length of the viaduct. To the sun there. Thank you, train. The bit of canal we've just come along was uh, a new bit because uh, the route originally just went along there and because of the road and other things it, it was uh, chopped off so they had to dig another bit of canal along there and this is why presumably we hadn't got a towpath to come along but uh, a nice bit of green park on the top of it all. Very this is an explanation of the rerouting of the canal using the National Library of Scotland old maps. This is showing the uh, 25 inch 1873 to 1888 map and you can see the canal coming in from top left to bottom right and going under the railway bridge at the top passing the works and the railway viaduct and then passing Arundel Mill. When the new road was made it went through the same railway viaduct arch as the original canal so the canal when restored had to be rerouted so you can see what's happened it had to go around in a curve and go under the railway and under the road in a different place and this is Arundel aqueduct where the river goes underneath the canal and there was a board along there explaining the, uh, the diversion of the canal which I'll see if I can include and just off to the side of the canal after that there's a sluice gate and a weir
Bowbridge Lock, fully restored. Nice sunny day for a change. And here's an interesting circular spill weir which was mentioned on that sign back there. Doesn't need to be doing much spilling at the moment. <laughs> Boat seem to have sunk over here. Another mile post, Warbridge One, Inglesham, twenty seven <coughs> and three quarters. We obviously come to the end of the navigable bit now because the water's right down low here. All the way as far as, far as that lock. It'll get worse. Here we're coming up to the next lock. The canal's actually flowing down here despite the lack of water in it. So I wonder where it's coming from and where it's going to. Here's the information board about that. I'll see if I can include a still picture of that. And we approach the next lock. And this one is full of water and reeds. This is Ham Mill, lock number five. And it's the last of the fully restored locks. The level's gone low again and the water has sort of, uh, the canal's disappeared. It's obviously been filled in or bri bricked in, whatever, whatever bridge there used to be here. If at all. Bridge 2, Inglesham, 26 and 3 quarters. <laughs> One day they'll win at home. <coughs> and having come through past all these buildings on a road that's on top of where the canal route is, it emerges as a stream. A lock with no gates here. There's the stream going back the way we just come. <coughs> there's the lock, devoid of water. And then dissolves into overgrowth. Well, we're at Brimscombe now and we got diverted off the canal because it vanished. This is Grimscombe Port, the mill, as it says there. And it looks like we found some canal again. Hurrah. And having regained the canal, it's now become a quite just a little stream. Very pleasant. See that we've just been walking along was the river, because here there's a cut off stagnant bit canal which leads into a lock. With no gates. Going 
going under the road, but it's uh, been filled in somewhat. Which we can get through. Here's another. Here's another arch. And then obviously what is the canal. Thank you. Come to some works here which uh, have closed the towpath. So they have put a, a map here showing us the alternative route which we'll try to use. So we go under that. They're obliged to cross a railway to get back to the canal. It's fairly clear to me. And we come out somewhere near the canal with the plastering of all the signposts. Yeah, obviously some buildage is going to happen here. Ah, we have found the canal again and a disused lock. So walk straight over it. And we've so far done 4.35 miles, which is... Oh. At least halfway along our proposed route. A bridge. The canal's just there. And the river is just by the side of us going through its own little bridge. And on the other side of that bridge is what looks like the bottom end of a lock. This is this curved bit where the, the gate would have... Uh, the gate handles would have rotated. Otherwise, there's some running water down there. The top end of the lock is this archway. I think that's under the railway. And it's well and truly blocked off with concrete. And whatever the remaining water is, it's pouring through that pipe. Ooh, looks like we go through our own pipe. Spooky. On the other side we got this. That's the other end of that pipe, by the way. Unless this is the river, who can tell? Well and truly overgrown. Okay, so that probably was the river, the canal, because there's a proper bridge there for it to go under. And down below here is a, a trickle, which is probably the river. On the other side of this bridge, Another lock. The water cascading into it. The lock. The walls and stuff are all in place. Looks like we're approaching another lock. There's your telltale steps to go up. We arrive at the top of the steps. Is this? But luckily, after this set of gouges built on top, the canal reappears. It's getting exciting. It says three miles east of here, the canal enters the two mile long Sapperton Tunnel. At the time of building, the longest of its kind in the world. That's our destination. Now on the opposite side of the canal and on the side of the road, there's that church, and just along here is a Chalford 
roundhouse now. If it's visible, we hope it is. Oh, you can see it, but it, we can't. <laughs> it's got a, it's got a door on it. Can't see it in its magnificence. I have to find a way around where we could see it properly, so we get both the roundhouse and the church in the same view now. And the purpose of the roundhouse was, well, on the ground floor there was stables. Above that was grain store, and there was something else above that, which we have forgotten, but it's written on the sign, which we have taken a photograph of. Anyway, the cow is over there, uh, temporarily vanishing again. Not on the right path, but there's a nice autumn feel to it around here. Roads over there. Roads supposed to be crossing the canal at some point. And Hopefully that'll give us an idea where we are. Well, we've crossed the road and uh, found a quite a good evidence that there's a canal here. Not a lot of water, but at least it's there. Uh... Well, obviously, uh, there's a river down there. There's obviously an overflow from this magnificent canal, which is a bit more wiggly at the moment. And here's another lock, the top end, and water in it, wildlife. And the bridge over the end of it. Here we are on a nice little causeway between the canal on uh, the river on the left and the canal on the right. Beneath the bridge. There's a wall along the side there, perhaps that was another lock. Yes, it's a lock. Another mile post. Here we go under a bridge and looks like into another lock. Can't be many left now. Path's a bit sorry for itself up here. And on the other side from the canal, the river has widened out and become what it says on the OS map, a reservoir with a lonely swan. Up ahead of us, there's a steep hill. I doubt if the canal's going to go up that, which is a good sign that it may go through it instead. Not far to go. Hopefully this is the last little bit of uh, open space before the, uh, the tunnel. Just past the last lock. The kind of camera's wobbling about now because the battery's run out on the gimbal. Right. Here we are then, after many more overgrown locks which weren't worth picturing because uh, they're all pretty much the same followed by a lovely lunch Here we are at the Sapperton Tunnel It's a listed building This is on my list of things to see Hear the water dripping. Yes, don't call me dripping. <laughs> oh, it's lovely sound effects, isn't it? It's dark. on echo. There we are, Sapperton Tunnel, eight miles of slog. Nine point two actually. <laughs> and we've missed the bus so we've got to wait for another one to come along. 
We shall entertain ourselves meanwhile. There we are. That's it.